Hello everybody and welcome to Rad Vintage. We're here with its owner, RJ. RJ, thank you for having us, man. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming in. Oh, no problem, man. You see, you got a lot of starter stuff, 80s t-shirts. We swing it on back and you have like a bunch of G.I. Joes. You have, man, you have everything. Like, how did, how did this inventory come about? Uh, well, in the last couple of years, I've been going out and hunting and finding and searching and collecting and answering phone calls from people who say they want to sell me some stuff. And then What's probably some of the more stranger items that you've picked up? Uh, I did pick up two uh, V mint dolls in the box. Yeah. And you know, when I tell people, hey, I got two V dolls, they're like, what? I'm gonna talk. What are you talking about? And do you know what I'm talking about? No. No. V was a TV show from the '80s. It was um, one of those movies, the TV movies. Yeah. And it's where these aliens come down. And they're actually lizard people, and they're trying to kill the, eat the humans and all the stuff. And then some of the lizard people don't like the other lizard people, and they join with the humans. And then so was this like like your favorite movie that like it's no, so obscure and nobody else knows about it? It was just on Encore like two months ago, so now I just remember it. Oh, see, no one has Encore. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, come on. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, as far as collections here. Do people just walk in here and, and throw stuff at you? Like, like, what are some of the better collections that you've acquired through that? Like, people just walk um, in. Some guy came in once, and he's like, uh, my my uncle gave me these, uh, and now I want to sell them. I never played with them or opened them, and they were the I, I first 17 Ninja Turtles. Wow. So, like, carded. Really carded Ninja yeah, Turtles? Ninja he just, Turtles. like, kind of like here? Here, I want to sell them to you. Was One he dying? Was he like, did yeah, he have he no one else that loved Ninja Turtles? And his, well, I only was able to buy 16 of them because during One the more. time when we were looking through them, uh, his son decided that he wanted to open up the Bebop. And did so you punch him in the face at that point? No. How old was the kid? Uh, <laughs> I was about to say I was going to kick him in the balls. <laughs> oh, he doesn't have any probably. It would have been okay. <laughs> okay sorry. It's like, like his no. little boy vagina. Oh, yeah, I don't do that. Crush it in there. I don't kick kids in the balls. <laughs> okay, Sometimes, sure. just knee them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so, no, I wasn't mad. I was like, well, you know, that's, his dad was mad because he's like, oh, I'll lose money in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> don't give it. You kick that's him. That's how I talk. <laughs> okay. Now, and so, going from all, all these collections, I see you have the G.I. Joe fleet back there. You have, you have some really impressive toys over here. How does that swing into clothing? You have, you have the, well, the ugly uh, Cosby sweaters going on here. You have starter jackets. Almost every team, from what I can see, and hanging over the our cost heads. sweaters from all the kids. And hanging over us is the thriller, the thriller jacket. That's correct. Michael Jackson. Yes. Not the actual thriller Not jacket. Chanel. Uh, yeah, all kinds of great stuff. And if you notice, it's all from mostly 80s and 90s, right? Yeah, yeah. Some 70s. So that's how the store is. It's 80s and 90s. Um, but there is toys. Did you ever get yeah. that customer and be like, it's not vintage, it's retro? And I just tell them to prove it. And then they can't, and then I prove it. Yeah. Well, this is dated by, by years? Well, retro is kind of like I go to Target and I'm going to buy a Metallica shirt. And then, or Wait, would you, go go to, would you go to Target and buy a Metallica shirt? No. They don't make good shirts, man. Why I, would you go to Target? I did buy, uh, I was just in there and I did buy a Star Wars shirt for a white trash party. That, that's what, if I needed see, something white trashy, I think Target. And I poured, I spilled, because um, I went as a Nintendo lover, and I, I spilled um, SpaghettiOs all over my shirt because I was playing so much. Like, you know. Because you didn't have string cheese? It's SpaghettiOs. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so anyways, yeah, um, so anything there, like a remake, that's what you would call a retro. So this is the author. The, the original. It's the true vintage. So up there is a true vintage Nirvana shirt. That's vintage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, and the toys that I carry are the true vintage toys of the era. Like when we were kids, we would have went to KB Toys or Toys R Us. KB in its heyday. Yeah. Or the, does it exist anymore? No. No, they felt it's gone. Apart, right? Yeah. I, we were talking about my friend and I were talking about the other day. I just if it was still there right now, I'd go look at stuff. Yeah. By my wife's shops. But I don't get that. I can't do that. 
Now, having all this inventory, you ended up with some pretty good real estate in here. Like, you got some beautiful hardwood floors. You're in a great location. That's correct. Yeah, man. How did, how did this, like, when you're starting a company, it's usually pretty difficult. Did you have the tough first year? Actually, I had a really good year. Did you? Some? Yeah. I, yeah. I felt that way because the second year, I was like, what just happened? But yeah. I realized what happened. When I opened, uh, I live in the neighborhood. This spot was open. And so when I opened, it was like the height of this 80s fashion in the hip hop culture. Making it come back. Yeah, so like everyone was coming in and they wanted the starter jackets and the snapback hats and they thought it was amazing. And then the style and the fashion changed. Mm -hmm. And so like the, the market died. So I had to figure out other ways. And I know that this, at that point, my toy selection was very small. So you started with the clothes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, originally it was a clothing store okay. with a few toys. Um, my old toys. I can see now. The, the, the name makes more, yeah. more sense now. Yeah. So, and, yeah, so I started with the, the clothing, and then I brought in my old overstock toys. And they sold so well. They used to have, like, antique stuff here. And I was like, this is stupid. What kind of antique stuff? Like, like sweet beer signs and... Sweet mugs. Sweet. Sweet. This, is a, this is a sweet ass sign. <laughs> Pretty sure I can get it for 50 yeah. bucks off. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, uh, I, I did have beer. I used to have beer signs so over there. Like when. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This stuff does just like, kind of like, what? Like those cameras that I showed you earlier from like the those 60s and the 50s. Yeah, they're sweet, but they don't fit here. Yeah. And so I had stuff That's like that. That's true, yeah. And That's people, a good decision. Yeah. Because awesome if, if you go to to most like vintage places, they yeah. they just they just stock it up. Right. They just pile it on, and, and eventually it could get to a point where where that I just walk into a hoarder's house, like. Yeah. And you manage to keep it very clean, like for what it is. Some people have people tell me all that all the time. Yeah, this is a this is a huge contrast that's supposed to going into a store like Quake. You've been into the into Quake. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk bad about my friends. No, 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 no. they're cool. They're cool. We actually we, we got to find right, one of their stores. Yeah. We're good friends with them. But right. I'm just I'm just trying. To, there's an extreme contrast. You're you have a more retail kind of boutique going on. Right. Yeah. It is organized. Um, you know, and again with my store, you're gonna find more of the old toys and nothing new. And it's if you want in there, it'd be new. But everything's like, and then here's just like, yeah. you know. But everything here is not for sale, though. You have some of your own. I know. Just sometimes swing, I'm swing a your dick with some surprise. <laughs> sometimes that is here. weird. Yeah, just like I gotta show you, like. Why would what you I do have. that? Why would you tempt people? Like, because well, what happened was my showcase at my house wasn't ready. I had to build it, and then I was like, well, I'll just keep these here, and then I kept them there, and people kept talking about it, and I'm like, well, I'll just keep them there. Okay. And they're just a story. To start talking to people about toys, and then we start going to other stuff. Okay. Well, well fr from the toys that you have here, what are probably some of those that mean the most to you? Aside from the V's, like the V's, that's kind of like your well, own thing that no one else. No, well, a select group. The V's don't mean a lot to me. It's just it was a cool thing to find. Yeah. Because you don't see them too often. Yeah. Let me tell you another so I story. See, I, see, I, see, I also story. see gaming thing. I see Nintendo stuff. Yeah. Like you brought a lot of your childhood. You just that's put what, it in the store. That's what it is. That's, uh, I have a sad story. That I can maybe I can share with you. Go ahead. Sure. Okay, one time I decided to change my room. Okay. And I took all my old toys, Transformers, E-Man, I didn't have any G.I. Joes, I had an awesome amount of Star Wars, some of the um, other stuff, gosh, I can't think of anything. I'm sure I had Voltron in there, and then, um, so... I put them all in a garbage bag, like two or three of them, black garbage bag. And I told my dad to put them in the attic. Mm. In the attic for him, maybe he got confused, but it happened to be outside on the curb where the garbage man came. And he took my toys to the dump. That's where they're stored right now. I gotta go out and try to find them, but they're under the ground probably. People are probably skiing on them, having a good old time. So wait, did you just tell us the, the plot from Toy Story 3? Is that what you did? <laughs> <laughs> so you, probably, you just lied to us. <laughs> They're, <laughs> They're a freaking, freaking liar. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they stole my true life's <laughs> event. I can tell you a sad story. 
I had GI Joes. I had a lot mm. of GI Joes. Junior would remember. I had all. I stole these GI Joes fair and square as a child. They were mine. I Where had from? them for a long time. Where Everywhere. From? Flea markets, uh, Gold Blast when it existed, Ventures. Um, Target. No, 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 no. This before Target. that. Before that. And these were mine. Walmart. I love these things. I walked out into uh, to the alley with this box full of GI Joes because I was going to play with yeah. my with my neighbor. Yeah. We always just just played like that. And uh, and as I'm walking out, open the gate. I have no idea. This black silhouette. Not to say it was black. I mean, maybe we don't know. <laughs> Just kind of swung me down to the Wait. floor oh. and stole my box of GI Joes. Maybe you said it was a black silhouette. Whether it was karma, maybe it was. Oh no, death. I think death really, really likes GI Joes. Snuck up and took. Him. Yeah. Was, you know, you're lucky though. I think he probably was gonna kill you that day. Like it was your last day on the earth, and then he saw your GI Joes, and he's like, "Well, he's like, I would have had <laughs> my GI Joes." Yeah, but he's like, "This is in, in in my dead cold hands." Yeah, knocked you over, stole your GI Joes. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of incidents, you didn't. You weren't always a shop owner. No. You were what? Are, like a pro cyclist? You know, did you have? No, like, I was never did you have a pro. like a tight suit on with a aerodynamic helmet? No, that's um, when you're doing time trials. Like you do time trials. My bad. That's okay. I'm sorry. Uh, the but we did. I was doing racing, and um, I was racing, and uh, and I was just doing that for fun. <laughs> like, like, did you did you make a fake ramp out of some cardboard boxes and? That's BMX. No, I was racing on a team. I was on a team, and uh, not working really. Uh, sound a little bit on eBay of the clothing, and then uh, one day, uh, my wife and her friend are at the beach, and they're like, "Come meet us." And my friend and I are riding on the path. Come meet us. Come meet us. Come meet us. Oh, come meet us. Come yeah. and meet us. I thought you were yeah. trying to speak Spanish. I'm like, whoa. You want to switch it up? What's that from? No. Comidas? No. Ah, yo, semilla. Ah, yo, semilla. No, no. Are you saying, ay, yo, Dios mío? Maybe. But what's. Well, Go I don't know. Goonies, but she has the, the diamonds. Ah, yo, semilla. Ah, yo, semilla. <laughs> what's she saying? <laughs> no great. sign. Not today. <laughs> 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 One of the best moments of my life. <laughs> Nothing racist about that. <laughs> it's okay. No, the guy in the back. No, no, no. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what happened? Like you were, you were having oh, yeah, a so good we were on time, there us and making fun of some no, Spanish we were riding, on the way. And uh, this old man decided that he's going to cross in the middle of the lakefront path. And bam, like that to each other. And he broke my hand. That's why I got this bump. Look at that. Oh, man. But then I had to find some kind of reasoning. And then so was that your vicious accident? Yeah, traumatized. Like well, I had pins in my hand and oh, all okay, that yeah, stuff, and surgery, it. and yeah, and a big cast for a long time. So I had to try to figure out what it was. Did you have anybody cool paint over your? No, your I had cast a soft cast. I was, oh, so, I was, I was upset because you have you have a lot of great artist friends. Like yeah. you're you're all tattooed up. You have some beautiful tattoos. Thank you. You have the big Andre the Giant. Yes, by Derek Mason. Derek Mason. Which but he would be mad because it's Masan, but I just call him Masan. Masan. Yeah, I well, call him Mason. Yeah. 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 St. Francis. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. He grew up on a farm. Right? You have the Andre the Giant, and then you have another yeah. Derek Mason piece right behind us. Yeah. The, the TKO. TKO. Yep. And yeah, that's, that's, that's a beautiful piece. That was from the 8 bit show on California. So you kind of lost out on that. Why didn't you request the hard case, knowing that you could have gotten something cool out of it? Couldn't get a hard case. Because of those pins in there. Oh man! And I didn't get that old man's number, so I couldn't sue him. You guys got that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, right now we're gonna take a walk around. We're gonna look at some of your cool cases over here. We're gonna look through a lot of your clothing. Okay. So, if you ever want to know any more cool stories, just ask. Oh, do you want to go ahead and? Well, I'm just saying. Like, there's one time where this guy came in. and He's like, I need to sell all this GI Joe. I need to sell it. And I said, I don't really buy G.I. Joe. I don't know it. He's like, look, I'll get you a great deal. I said, what do you have? Bring it in. He's like, oh, you need to come out here to buy a TV and see because it's really heavy. And so I went out there and <laughs> literally he had uh, three of the USS flag. Yeah. Once, okay. Yeah. 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 You keep going. Okay, you just said it like no, no, no. Like oh, you, because that happened to you. That, no, no, because, yeah, because that's oh. what it's on. <laughs> that same guy came to you. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, think I stole you your GI Joe. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> he took He's my wanted to knock you over because you're yeah. carrying the three huge boxes of U.S. flags. Yeah. 
No, because the way you're describing him, the guy yeah. was in a panic. I was like, oh, oh okay. no. <laughs> like, you're going to show up there. He had a pipe going through his leg. And yeah. the only way to save no, him was if you I bought this toy from him so you get a surgery nah. on his leg. Well, he was leaving. He was moving, uh, leaving the country to uh, leave. France okay. or Belgium. So he didn't stuff a bunch of cocaine in the flags. And no, but I did find cocaine once in a leather jacket here. True story. You guys want cocaine? Come to Radmond's. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, it's not. We do not support drug use. We do not support selling of drugs unless you live in Colorado. Mm. Anyway, so yeah. yeah, I bought all this G.I. Joe and now I gotta figure out, like, learn it because I did. That's the one toy but I didn't know. That much about it. Now I'm gonna learn. Yeah. So if you if you know anybody who wants to come in and talk GI Joe with me and teach me different guys and I know they have some ladies that'd be fun. And we have a couple of guys here who want to talk GI Joes. So you guys come over here, walk with us. I'm gonna go have After a customer. You, sir. Thank you. Hey guys, still here at Red Vintage checking out some of the stuff that he's got on display. It's also for sale. Um, everybody knows I grew up in the 80s, early 90s, loved a lot of the stuff. Turtles is my number one, you know, thing. Tons of original lines here. Splinter, Donnie Leo, he's got a Casey. Couple shredders, if you need a shredder, I see both soft heads and hard. Tons of Joes up here on the top shelf. He's got a lot of the favorites. He got Roadblock, Jinx, Duke. Two Storm Shadows, one of them's bent over with another Red Ninja about to slap his ass for some reason. I don't know, I don't display the stuff. Um, he's got his Zorana there, his Art and Sister. This is the uh, no earring version. There were two. There was one that came with earrings on, this one without. Uh, they're both highly sought after, not one more, worth more than the other, but still two great pieces to have. Um, if you go down here, you see a whole slew of uh, WWF Hasbro action figures from back in the 90s that all of us wrestling fans had. I see the Jake the Snake with the spring and the punch, a couple different Hulk Hogan's. Uh, Demolition, Axe Smash, Crush, there's a Tito Santana, Dusty Rhodes with the polka dots, Akeem the African Dream, there's even the Flair with the headlock, you got an Andre the Giant mug, which I didn't notice earlier. Of course, you got the ring with the announce table, you got an LJN Vince McMahon in there, back to the Turtles, he's got some box Turtle Mutation figures, which I think are dope. But up top here is one of the examples of something not being for sale, but more for a display. You got the... Uh, Toy Biz Hall of Justice action set from the uh, DC Superheroes line from the uh, late 80s, early 90s. You see, you got the Wonder Woman, Lex Luthor, Superman. These, regardless of whether you are a DC fan or not, if you're a toy fan, you recognize the rec. Uh, just, I can't think of the word, but yeah, just the, they pop, you know. I don't have any of these in my personal collection. I'm not big on this line because I didn't really mess with it as a kid. But if I ever came across a pretty good chunk of the set carded, I'd scoop them up in a heartbeat just for nostalgia's sake. And because looking at the sculpts on them, yeah, they were a lot simpler. But compared to some of the crap that we get nowadays that passes toys, that's pretty much uh, a lot of the great stuff there. Um, up top, you can kind of see here, we've got a Ultimate Warrior from the Classic Superstar series. It's actually pretty current. This came out about four to five years ago. Um, Robin Williams as uh, Mork, Mork and Mindy couple uh, Michael Jordan some mugs this is really cool for a toy being as old as this one if you really check out the face sculpture on this they got really really good work on here doesn't look as cheaply made as some of the other things this is a prime piece to have I, I really enjoy this one um, too bad it's not boxed but it's still great I I would add it to my collection regardless but behind me one of the holy grails in action figure collecting the G.I. Joe Aircraft Carrier USS Flag. Now, for those of you that listen to Spinner Rack, you guys know how much this meant to Big B and how he always wanted one, never got one. And I got into G.I. Joe's pretty late in my life, but this was something that I've always wanted. To this day, I, will, um, I don't have one yet, but I will. Um, I know I'm going to pay out of my nose for it, but it would be worth it, especially for a sealed piece. Um, moving on. If you see, keeping the camera up top, we've got some Marvel superhero stuff. The training center, which is always a nice piece to have. They don't make play sets like they used to. That's just, that's a fact. Punisher van, very rare to find in mint condition. A lot of people open it. Um, if you don't have one and you need one, come down. He's got two of them. This is also a piece that you will never see anything like this again. I mean, yeah, you'll, you might find another Marvel hero center 
down the line, you might make something for the Marvel superheroes, but never will you ever see another Punisher vehicle. Um, if you come down with me here, we've got some different items here in this case. Now, like I said, Turtle Guy that I am, I walked in and saw these prototypes. Now, these prototypes are very, very badass. Uh, you see he's got prototype for uh, Teen Hero Don, Ralph, the, uh, I don't remember the exact name of him, from the uh, Cave Turtle series. He's got the Star Trek Leonardo back there. There's just a Spock. The Money Ralph from the Universal series of figures. Uh, the actual figure glue in the dark, and it had three variations. One with uh, paint on his chest, one with paint on his legs, and one with no paint at all. Uh, and then in the back there, you see some of the, if I believe they're called um, Robot War. I, I, I don't remember the uh, exact name, but they were the turtles. Basically, just came with a bunch of armor pieces that you add them up. Still, any type of prototype's awesome. See a, a unique paint job on the uh, Pizza Tossing uh, Raph here. A couple of the head sculpt, all prototypes. Very, very cool. Down on the second shelf, a, a complete series of the original Kenner Star Wars line. Very, very badass. You don't see that very often. You see the Vader there with the lightsaber in his hand. A couple of different R2s with the lightsaber launching action. Some Ewoks, you know, whatever. Ewoks, blah. You see the small head Luke back there, the redesigned stuff. He's got it all the way in the back. I don't know if you guys can see that. He's got a, a, a near mint yak face figure, which is very, very rare. As a Star Wars collector, a lot of you would probably know that. Down one more shelf, we've got some more turtle stuff. The movie figures, which are always in demand. It's got the under, two of the undercover cloth figures, very high in demand. But then here in the Ziploc baggie, you'll notice he's got a Super Shredder. Now this Super Shredder was the Chef Boyardee mail away variant. You could get this with a few proofs of purchase and some shipping and handling. The only difference between this one and the Cardo one released in the series was the paint job. This one is uh, black uniform, which he appeared in the movie. The one in the background is uh, the purple outfit, which is the one available on card. This shelf, I have no idea what the hell these are, but they're pretty cool to look at. And if you go to the bottom shelf, you see one of the original Power Ranger Morphers from the uh, Bandai playset, along with two versions of the Wonder Bread He-Man Mail-Away figure. The loose version is a remake, while the one in the... Uh, collector case here was actually the original very very highly sought after it was actually featured last season on an episode of toy hunter and uh he paid a pretty penny for it and it wasn't in as good condition as this either moving on down here we've got some classic jack specific uh wwf superstars Shawn michaels stone cold farouk just bone crunching action Pee Wee herman stuff robin hood this caught my eye earlier the bootleg karate turtle warriors think about adding this to my collection just for the hell of it they actually look pretty cool they don't really look too bootleg if you look at the back of that they look like the originals just with cloth outfits you know this version I was talking to Alex off camera earlier I thought it was pretty funny he's got two splinters being the pervs that we are one of them has a hole right in his crotch we don't know how he got that we don't know why that one doesn't so whatever also moving on we've got some other turtle items you see like the sneak the shoelace sneaker holders very popular back in the day when i was in garama school jurassic park look at that. alex has him busting through the fence because he doesn't know how to not touch stuff it's power ranger stuff star trek vulcans he's got some of the giant sized turtles up here he's got bebop donnie movie leo and rocksteady if you go even farther up he's got some vintage tin lunch boxes which are pretty badass knight rider yeah i'm thinking about you johnny he man he's got some buck rogers archies the hardy boys all types of stuff and if you go all the way up top you can see a masters of the universe skeletor am radio as well as a millennium falcon original box space jam shooter some power ranger stuff very awesome saba uh box with the original nintendo ten dollars to anybody who can tell me who that character is on the box without using google please people let me know um another bootleg that's just actually handed to me off camera holy crap um on a Michelangelo card, looks like they used the body of Mondo Gecko, and I don't know, that head isn't even from anybody in the series, but he comes with Raphael's weapons. Um, holy shit, this is pathetic. Uh, and you see the back of the card there. Total bootleg, but you know what? As a turtle collector, hardcore, I might actually ask him about the price on this. This is pretty cool to have, just to sit there and laugh back at, you know? I'll take this back, please, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Um, if you follow me back down here, like I said, moving on, Power Ranger stuff, aliens, 
some stuff not so old here, early 90s, whatever. If you're an Alien fan, there. DC Superheroes, this is what I was talking about earlier. He's got some nice carded uh, pieces here. Aquaman with the kick fin action. Robin, which I know Alex was eyeing. This is actually a very, very cool piece. Like I said, as a kid, I really wasn't into these, but my neighbors were, and I remember playing with some of these. It's got the Keaton Batman, very, very cool. You know, you you cannot grow up in the 90s and 80s and be a comic fan and not like these. You know, it's just, that's the truth. There's a Green Lantern back there and a couple more characters. He's got the Two-Face up here from the animated series with the bling. He's showing me a, holy cow, let me get this. I gotta show you guys, I have to put this on camera. Check this out. An entire box of that turtle bootleg figure. Holy crap. RJ, why do you have this? Uh, I, collect boot, I collect bootlegs. Oh, well then there you go. Yeah, damn. <laughs> Did you get all this from the same guy? Yeah, they're actually from Argentina. Wow. I believe the head's from Mighty Max. Okay. You wouldn't have a name to go with this, would you? Like, to who this character is supposed to be named, it's, technically? No, I know it's supposed to be like Mondo Gecko, but they right. used the head of that guy from Mighty Max. Wow. A whole box. If you guys need this, come on down to Rad Vintage. It's here. There you go. Thank you, sir. Anyways, moving on. Adam's Family Cereal with a reusable flashlight. Cousin It. You know, by today's standards, the way society is and stuff, if you really look, this is kind of fishy. This really doesn't remind me of a flashlight. I mean, it's got a hole on the top there. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Whatever. Raul Julia's last movie, though. Or, no, not his last movie. One of his great movies. Last movie was Street Fighter. I was talking about that to somebody the other day. Moving on, Raw Ring, Taz. This I noticed as well off camera. I don't know if RJ has noticed this. I'll bring it up to him later. Pink Ranger movie action figure. Problem is, it's not a Pink Ranger, and it's the movie version of the Black Ranger. Dun dun dun. Finally, we end it with some Marvel superhero action figures. You guys can't have these here in the front. I'm buying them when I leave. Uh, some X Men stuff, some more loose stuff. You know, basically, some of the great stuff. Me and David used to play with these all the time. You got the Wolverine. And that's not the only thing we did with them. We would take them from Venture as well. You know, back to good old Venture. We had our codes and everything. But that's another story for another day. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's still so much more stuff here. But I don't want to hog the camera. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our another toy guy. Part of the group now. Alex, what you got for us? <coughs> uh, well, that's actually what he has here for us to look at and enjoy. Let me scooch. What's going on now? I was just, and what I like about this store, it's also available. There's a lot of things here for women too, for little girls over here. You got like Brooke Shield dolls, which I, I like. You got the Spice Girls. I mean, I know we're all guys, we're big collectors, but you got a few things here also for the ladies, which is which is nice. Over here, you got a lot. Of, this is something I don't see every day, Ultraman. I'm a big uh, Spectre Man Ultraman fan. There's something like this found here. These are real nice finds. This is a great store to come to, to look around. You got the Freddy Krueger, the uh, Fright Squirter, which you don't really see that too often. Let me show you guys. They're not really going really to make this anymore. You know, a Freddy Krueger that actually squirts liquid into your face. It just doesn't happen that much. Anymore. Real cool stuff back here. <clears throat> you also got stuff back here. Um, Last Airbender, the movie was crampy, the cartoon's excellent, the toys, passable. You know, that's all I'm going to say about that. Everyone who knows about that movie is sad, but it was still a great cartoon. Back over here, you have some Star Trek, some more Power Ranger stuff, older Hulk stuff. Now, this is cool, but what I like is he has right next to it, still in the package at a great price, and you can't beat that. That's great. These are, they don't, there's not a lot of mobility. I'm also into articulation and stuff, but this just has something about it that's really cool. And just the, the style, the drawing, the way they sculpted this, they didn't make them like this anymore. Over here you have some more Marvel vehicles, which uh, I like because nowadays you don't see them in cars, they're not really promoting any of that, but back then, when you're younger, you always want to put your superhero in something, have a, yeah, Superman could fly, but it's cool if you throw him in a car and have him going too. So I always did like that. Stuff like this too, Venom. By Toy Biz, this is a pretty good one right here. Just the packaging, the size. When you're little, think about it. You're real long, you're short, but then you pull this big thing out. He's huge, you know. He's big for me. Imagine if I was like, a lot younger and shorter. Well, I haven't grown much. Over here, 
in this case this case has a lot of things especially from the 90s especially what I like about here is a lot of things are affordable you're gonna bring your kid you're not gonna break the bank you have the Ghostbusters from the real Ghostbusters cartoon early 90s aliens the Voltron up there which I'm eyeing I'm thinking about picking up myself uh, for all, all you old enough to remember uh, Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse I love this because you don't see things like this anymore he has the entire set you have Pee Wee I don't know, Lawrence Fishburne in the cowboy hat. I think he was also the mailman, if I'm not mistaken, which was great. Down here, one of my favorite things, you have the, the Migo Godzilla. In the back, you have Bigfoot. And then up here, you have the aliens. I think this is from Kenner. This is from the late 70s. These are great pieces. The little top piece is always missing on a lot of ones that you find in attics. So what I like is he has three versions, man. One in the box, one open, complete, and then the one single one. I mean, you can't really ask for much more when you're looking for uh, collectibles, especially stuff in this era. It's all right here, easy to find. You don't have to go looking and hunting for yourself. As they mentioned earlier, you have from the V uh, cart uh, miniseries, which is actually, I remember, it was actually a great show. Um, they scared the hell out of me being that young, but that was a good one. Any of you who remember that know what I'm talking about. Over here you have some more Care Bears, Rainbow Bright, which you don't see a lot of. The only reason I know is because my wife's a big fan. You have Michael Knight sitting in there. Actually, that Michael Knight came with the Knight Rider car kit, uh, which I'm missing him, so I might have to scoop that up. You have Chuck Norris here from the early 90s. I don't know what suit he's rocking there, but it's hilarious. This is definitely uh, screaming 90s right there. Coming up here, panning a little back more. Snake Mountain to your left, uh, Skeletor's Palace, I can't remember the exact name of it. This is cool though. This is a piece that uh, I couldn't afford, my mother couldn't afford when I was little. She couldn't also get Castle Grayskull, but now that I'm older, I'm definitely going to be getting this to go with my Castle Grayskull because I love that piece. And then companion out over here to the left, this is probably my favorite uh, display in the entire store. It's all the Generation 1 Transformers, I'm a huge fan. You don't go to a lot of places in Chicago and just find Dinobots sitting there for sale. Um, you know, here you have three of them. You have uh, Soundwave back there. You have Devastator. All the little mini cassettes, which were always harder to find. Uh, and all the Autobots down here, which I love. One of my favorite ones, like I mentioned before, Jetfire. You also have Astro Train. I mean, these are basically what I loved growing up as a kid. One of my favorites too was Shockwave, uh, the gun, they're just standing there, just even just as an art piece, it's beautiful. You have an original uh, Optimus Prime. I mean, you just can't find a lot of places in store, stores where you go and they have this, the Generation 1 line, and it's, uh, it's actually beautiful. I, would I wish I could take the whole stand with me. Okay, now we're going to pan right over here. Speaking of Castle Grayskull, here it is. <clears throat> And this is something that it's, if you were uh, fortunate enough to have one, you absolutely love. If you come down a little bit more too, you could even see uh, the original Thundercats. And that was another great line that I loved. You had Lionel, you have Tiger, Mamra, Mama, which you don't find too often. That's a really hard piece. It's always, you know, most people never grab them. Then you have all the villains over there. You have uh, Sabretooth, uh, the Walrus Man. Uh, just all of them. I love that cartoon. It actually holds up pretty well even till today. And as he pan down more, he gets into a lot more of the original Mattel He-Man line from the early 80s. Coming down over here, you have uh, you have characters like Skeletor, Evil Lynn. You have He-Man, Ram Man, uh, Beast Man, uh, Cyclops. Just all the all the all the characters from He-Man that. You, I absolutely love they still look good the colors are good the prices are very affordable and reasonable here and they vary on the condition which overall this is a great pl place if you're looking to uh, fill your collection with missing pieces coming up here to the top this is another thing I like the cards if you grew up in the 90s you everything was about cards as a kid and here they have a lot of stuff that they don't make anymore you're not going to find them. If you were to buy this whole box, good luck trying to find more. You have E.T., Superman, Alf, yeah, Harry and the Hendersons, which was, you know, that was hilarious. Voltron, Sidney Lauper, who actually was a great artist. And the ones you couldn't buy when I was younger, Fantasy Girls, but I could buy this whole thing now. So we'll take that. 
coming over here, we have X-Men, Gremlins, which is a great movie, and then, of course, Garbage Pail Kids. I love Garbage Pail Kids. And for those of you old enough to remember, Johnny Depp, 21 Jump Street. I hope I get, uh, what was her name, Hoffs. She was a great actress. Coming over here, like I said, what I like about this store is a little bit for everything. You bring your kid here, you're going to have all kinds of little knickknacks they're going to want to buy. It's not going to break your bank, and you could also get a nice piece All right, here we yourself. got all the original Nintendo games. Yeah. Pretty much any game you're looking for, you're probably going to find here. You have Super Nintendo, Nintendo. Um, I was more of a Sega fan, but I really appreciated Nintendo and what they did in their games. He even has a couple of the game consoles, Nintendo 64 is right over there. It's just, um, if you're in the games and it's hard to find one, this is definitely the spot to come look. Everything's pretty much uh, working condition, great prices as you could see. And um, if uh, you're looking for one that you can't find, odds are you're going to find Those were here. a lot of my favorite pieces. I'm going to send it back over to Junior and Dave Dunkley. And that was our tour of Rad Vintage. Hey, Junior. What's up? Where's RJ? I don't know. Hey, RJ. Here I am! Oh, oh, RJ. RJ, tell the viewers at home where they can find you. You can find me in Chicago at Rad Vintage, which is at 1511 West Berwyn Avenue, 60640 in Andersonville. On social media, where can they pick you up? Oh, you should follow us on Instagram, Rad Vintage. That's the best place to follow us on Instagram. If you really want, you don't want to be following us on Instagram, then you can follow us on Facebook, which is also Rad Vintage. Awesome! I don't, <laughs> I don't think we have our mice. Account anymore. I don't think anybody <laughs> has their MySpace account anymore. <laughs> and you could call us and say, hey, RJ, how you doing? Which is 773-907-2225. They have the number flashing on the bottom, just like it is right now. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Now time to buy some toys. Bam! Let's do this.